Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are out on the launch pad with our uh, rebuilt, refit, ready-to-fly uh, SKS shuttle. Uh, now sitting at a precarious angle. Uh, we're going to try this out, thanks to uh, some comments uh, during the last launch about maybe tipping it back a little bit so that it doesn't push this way off the launch pad so much. Uh, we have our target set for uh, Tremonia Station, and you may be asking yourself what happened to the... Uh, the drive stage that was supposed to go up first and well I mean it did but we'll we'll get to that so anyway uh, Alice Campbell is at the stick today Bill Kerman is our engineer and Deanna last name I'm not going to try to pronounce is our system scientist and I know our relative inclination is a little high but I th don't think we're gonna make a single pass but I didn't want to wait too long for the uh, orbits to go all wonky, but it looks like if we divert north just a little bit on launch, we should be able to make this happen, so I'm going to go ahead and get this off the pad. Uh, ignition sequence start. And it looks like we have all greens across the board. Let's get these clamps off and see how well tipping the vehicle does for us. Okay, not bad. leaning into our gravity turn a little bit, but I don't feel the need to provide any correction at this particular juncture. We're just going to let this happen, and hopefully we won't have a repeat of uh, last flight's return to launch site aboard, which was horrible for many, many reasons. But it uh, looks like, well, yeah, starting to get some wiggle. That is unintentional obviously, and so I will try to wrestle this thing back under control. It could be from starting the gravity turn basically from the launch pad instead of getting up enough speed, hopefully, but uh, I'm going to pay real close attention to this thing and uh, try to get her on up into orbit. I will pick you guys up there. I chose a much steeper ascent path this time, thinking that uh, aerodynamic stresses may have had something to do with the failure during uh, last launch, so uh, instead opted to do, uh, get above a lot of the thicker air before we really started leaning into it. I think that uh, maybe us just being a little too low uh, and too into the gravity turn too soon may have contributed to that failure, um, so I was just looking to not repeat that scenario. So. Uh, a lot of this jiggling around is actually me trying to keep that relative inclination down. This uh, shuttle is actually alarmingly easy to fly, uh, although I did start to balance the fuel out a little too soon, causing some uh, nose up, which is pitched down in this particular case. But uh, very quickly figured out some of the balance, and there's booster set cleaning away. That did give us a little bit of wiggle, but nothing we couldn't handle. Uh, pretty easily, and now we're going to start really diving into this, and uh, we're coming up on our roll maneuver, so I'll actually turn you over to old me for uh, a good portion of that. Alright, we are well beyond our return to launch site mode. Uh, I think we're go ahead and go for our roll maneuver. It's just uh, nice and clean. Bring it on over Alice. little much on the off axis there. We're going to have to correct a little bit, bring that prograde vector. Nope, I'm going the wrong way. My mistake. We can kill these. We don't need to transfer any more liquid oxygen around. All right. Looks, uh, looks good. Continue our climb into orbit. There's our relative inclination marker, .01.02, really I'd accept up to, yep, there it is, .03, .05 is going to be my threshold well, that I'm going to shoot for. We'll see how well that works out. Oh, and how swiftly I forget that the angle of those engines has a serious effect on our prograde vector. So we'll just uh, nose up a whole lot, uh, really, to try to build that time to apogee. I was actually hoping to do a clean ascent straight out to our 400 kilometer needed orbit to uh, rendezvous with our space station, but looks like we'll just uh, bring it up on the periapsis side instead, or what 
will be the Aquabs' side instead. Yeah, we're just we're too close to our approaching Apogee to really uh, push it too far out ahead of us and still, I don't know, have a responsible trip to orbit, I guess. But the uh, Tremodia station is passing almost directly uh, ahead of us right now, which is really lucky. I didn't think that we were going to get uh, this high or this fast uh, in time to make a worthwhile rendezvous, and then we'd have to spend a couple of days doing uh, orbital passes, waiting for the time to rendezvous to approach, but uh, it looks like I actually completely accidentally timed this pretty well. So with our uh, time to Apogee starting to climb rapidly, we can just uh, start to fire right down the prograde vector and uh, come up here on main engine cutoff. So uh, here's old me. Well, 489 by 138 is not technically in orbit, and the relative inclination is uh, a little more than what I wanted it to be. Uh, not a big deal. I just want to make sure our refueling tank... Okay, good. It did not, in fact, drain, even though I conveniently forgot to lock it. Good for me, I suppose. Uh, no, I wanted those to stay locked. Never mind. My bad. My bad. All right. Let's see where we are in relation to our target yeah it looks like we are here for some reason denoted as a station it is there and oh look at this holy crap did we just do a launch to run well that's never happened before and nor will it ever happen again that's closest i think i have ever been so uh let's see if we can capitalize on this uh first things first we need to stage off our tank that will uh, deorbit eventually, and let's get our uh, solar panels out and deployed here. We should probably kick on these radiators to uh, keep this tank from draining. We can probably kick off the RCS so we don't waste a bunch of fuel. What is our... Ah, oh, liquid hydrogen. Dot zero, dot zero. Those radiators are doing a fantastic job of radi... Oh, come on, map view. Seriously, thank you. I'll try to make this maneuver at our descending node. See if we can't optimize on this incredibly fortuitous event. And uh, after some delicate tinkering, it does look like we will get our uh, closest encounter in uh, a little less than an orbit which uh, I, I don't know what exactly the qualifiers are, but I think it qualifies as a launch to rendezvous. Less than one orbit, right? I don't know. Somebody back me up on this one. Well, I've already missed it. So we'll do what we can. RCS back to arm, please. We're just going to go with it, and I'm going to run by the data over here. So let's... Uh, make sure the throttle is zero. Good. Stage those in, and we can lock these gimbals and shut these down. We'll just chase this node around a bit. Sure. Try to round this out with some RCS. Really good drop rate on that uh, separation at closest approach, however. Very, very excited about this. I've never done a launch to rendezvous before. I don't know if this exactly counts, but it seems like it's pretty close. Have I made a grievous error? Oh boy. Uh, no, not really. We're going to be passing periapsis and re-exiting the atmosphere again very shortly. Oops. You know, we should probably just kill the RCS and wait till we're outside the atmosphere again. So we'll just... Uh, do exactly that, and thankfully it doesn't have too much of an adverse effect on our uh, distance at closest approach, which is uh, extremely fortuitous, but uh, we'll 
open up the liquid hydrogen tanks and kick on the uh, fuel cells because we're going to need those later as we make this tuning node. And uh, some of you are probably wondering what happened to the transfer stage. Well, uh, I guess now's as good a time as any to fill any of you in on that. As we're making these very small corrections, we'll just drop down here into picture in picture mode. I forgot to press record. And by the time I realized it, uh, we were already at rendezvous with the station. We did manage to get this fully fueled HG3 stage into orbit. Uh, there were massive, massive problems, The most of which having to do with frame rate. The fact that I did not include a core that was oriented the same way as the AJ-10, so all maneuvers to get this rendezvous had to be done in reverse, which would have made for some very striking uh, commentary. And the frame rate being absolutely abysmal and then of course losses due to boil off which is half the reason why this shuttle mission is here but uh if you want to see you get two terrible dockings this episode for the price of one i know all of you are extraordinarily lucky <laughs> isn't that just grand but we did in fact eventually get it within the station Bumped it a whole bunch. I spent a lot of time switching back and forth and trying to get these two to stay lined up, but the frame rate was so terrible that it actually made it extraordinarily difficult to uh, control a spacecraft this heavy. Um, this thing with its uh, AJ-10 transfer stage thing came in just shy of 380 tons. Uh, I believe, and that's when it was fully fueled, of course. It was just a little bit lighter once we bled off almost half of the uh, available liquid hydrogen. But uh, we were eventually able to nudge that thing in and get it to dock. And switching back now to our shuttle, which is almost uh, on top of the station. We did zero out most of our relative velocity. We are moving in towards the station, which is still doing the nice skip. Uh, even here with the footage sped up to about 10 times normal speed, uh, you can see how choppy everything was being, and it certainly wasn't going to get any better from here on out. Once we start shedding parts from this thing, eventually, I mean, I know we've got like three or four big things on here we can get rid of, maybe two, you know, whichever. We'll figure it out, but there is going to be a lot of trimming uh, once we get this thing exactly where we want it to be, which will be nice. But the shuttle has to basically fly three quarters of the way around the station as we pass here over Hawaii and uh, a pretty mean looking tropical storm there. But uh, yeah, we need to park, park on the docking coupler here on the far side. So we will actually swing past the station. Uh, pull ourselves a little handbrake maneuver to zero out our speed and get ourselves moving in towards the docking port. Uh, some ace flying there from Alice. And uh, we're actually in close enough to select it as target, so we will make our actual approach, being pretty careful. This is all done painstakingly slowly because, again, the frame rate was just absolutely terrible. I think I'll actually let it drop to real speed as we're getting docking, so you can kind of get a glimpse of what the frame rate was actually like. But, oh man, <laughs> off-axis dockings are just so much easier. I don't care what anybody says. But uh, we're going to start inching in there towards our, our final dock, so I will turn you over to old me, and I'm sure he'll tell you how the struggle is real. That was clean. I'm very, very happy with this. Fantastic. All right, and well, now the crew can uh, begin its uh, incredibly horrible frame rate of uh, refueling our HG3 stage, reinforcing the structures, and uh, getting this whole thing underway. So uh, that'll be in the next episode. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out. I really do appreciate it, and I will see all of you in the next one. So until then... See you later.